year, millions of people go fishing across the United States. Most of us target bass, walleye, crappie, among others. These fish are called game fish. Many native species, like gar, are labeled non-game, rough, or even trash fish. They are ignored, or even worse, needlessly killed. In today's video, we will discuss why those labels are harmful to alligator gar. Future videos in this series will highlight other species. Please like and subscribe to follow along with this series and other wildlife history topics. Before we discuss alligator gar, you need to understand why some species are called rough fish. In her book, A History of Fish and Fishing in the Upper Mississippi River, Harriet Bell Carlander suggested that the term rough fish originated with commercial fishermen. According to Carlander, lower quality fish were processed quickly or quote, rough dressed, and they were the first to be dumped overboard if the boat ran out of space. Over the years, everyone adopted that language and the terms rough fish and trash fish were born. It is beginning to change, but many states don't have regulations protecting non-game fish. In Kansas, for example, the daily limit for all bass species is 5, and they need to be at least 15 inches long in order to keep them. Non-game fish don't have that luxury. People are free to target them year-round, including during the spawn. Fishing regulations across the country are similar, and show how little people care about many native fish. These fishes have been ignored, or in the case of alligator gar, disrespected for too long. Alligator gar can be as large as 10 feet long and weigh more than 200 pounds. They are also very long-lived. They are ancient fish who have been around for approximately 24 million years, going back to the Jurassic period. Unlike the dinosaurs, gar survived the meteors and subsequent climate change. Gar have survived this long due to some unique characteristics that many modern fish don't have. It starts with their scales. Gar have ganoid scales, which are hard, interlocking scales that act like body armor. Unlike most fish that rely solely on gills for oxygen, gar are able to gulp air from the surface. Their throat is connected to a special swim bladder, an organ that normally helps maintain buoyancy, by a phenomic duct. The duct carries surface air to the bladder where specialized blood vessels absorb the oxygen. This allows gar to bypass the typical respiration process in low oxygenated conditions. Alligator gar are top predators, but like land predators such as coyotes, their diet is often misunderstood. Many people target gar because they believe having fewer gar in a water body will increase the number of game fish. Those people are wrong according to Dr. Solomon David, who studies gar at Nichols State University. He wrote in the February 2020 issue of Ranger Rick magazine that scientists studying gars have debunked that myth and quote, they learned that, like other predators, gars help keep balance in the ecosystem. So why do people attack these ancient giants? The answer is unfortunately very simple. They still view gar as trash fish and don't value them. On June 13, 2022, Field and Stream published a story about one of the largest alligator gars ever killed by a bow fisherman. It was 271 pounds and 7 feet and 11 inches. Field and Stream reported that the fish was over 40 years old, but Dr. David believes that it could have been much older. One comment on the Facebook post about this fish is a perfect example of the trash fish worldview. In response to someone else bemoaning the death of that gar, a man wrote that, quote, Tell me you know nothing about bow fishing or fishing and don't know about the ecological devastation caused by alligator gar without telling me you know nothing, unquote. This man clearly doesn't value gar and I'm guessing wouldn't appreciate a biologist telling him he's wrong. Field and Stream isn't a stranger to glorifying the death of these massive fish. In June 2022, they published a clickbait article celebrating the 10 largest gar ever caught. Both articles are full of the typical man vs beast language, like this sentence describing the end of a fight with an 8 foot and 300 pound alligator gar. Quote, After nearly an hour, he won the war. Reeling the gar into shallow water, he was able to grab it by the gills and drag it to the bank, 
unquote. The fisherman needed a neighbor's pistol to finish killing this particular gar. Many of these stories make it sound like the human is overcoming some massive challenge, when in reality they are just killing these wonderful fish. There is no skill like catching one on a rod and reel, there is only brute force strength. These fish aren't being killed for food, they are being killed for the photograph. This treatment isn't a surprise though. Americans have a long history of slaughtering gar. In 1900, a man named Mr. East took a fishing trip to San Antonio and his story was printed in the Kansas City Gazette in August of that year. It shows just how far some were willing to go in order to kill these fish. After failing to hook a large gar, he went to great lengths with weapons to kill it. Mr. East wrote that the gar at first tried to wink at him. Infuriated at the taunting, he tried about a dozen buckshot, but the blast didn't phase the gar, which made him feel, quote, real mad. In response, Mr. East rammed a bullet through the gar with his Winchester repeating rifle. These attitudes are still too common, but thanks to the work of biologists and community members, that is slowly changing. In 2019, the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation studied their social media post during a week dedicated to GAR. They concluded that it is, quote, promising that most Oklahoma constituents' sentiments were positive. Dr. David does enthusiastic GAR outreach on Twitter, and as of this publication, he has 30.4 thousand followers. Alligator GAR may never reach the popularity of bass or trout, but people are starting to learn about these awesome fish. We have many environmental challenges in the 21st century, but there is some hope. In the past decade, the alligator gar population across the Mississippi River watershed improved. If we can help recover an apex freshwater predator, we can certainly recover other imperiled species. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and comment below.